Let's be honest. Life's hard sometimes. We get discouraged, struggle in our faith, and it's easy to feel alone. Despite how you might feel sometimes, know that God's got your back. And so do we. Vision's prayer line team are ready to pray for whatever you're going through. Text your prayer request to 0401 132 888 and we will be praying for you. Or click prayerline at vision.org.au. That's 0401-132-888 or vision.org.au. It's another way Vision is helping you look to God daily. A biblical perspective on life, culture and current events. This is 2020 on Vision. Well, on a Wednesday, we like to check in with Ron Ross for updates on Israel, the Middle East and the ongoing war in Gaza. Ron, welcome. Thank you, Andrew. Ron, Hamas has agreed to a modified proposal for a Gaza ceasefire, according to Arab media. Yes, according to a report published by Al Arabiya News, a senior Hamas official has indicated the group has accepted a modified version of the American proposal for a ceasefire in Gaza. Hamas representatives are expected to travel to the Egyptian capital of Cairo to discuss the final details and the implementation of the deal. The White House urged Hamas militants in Gaza to release women, elderly and wounded hostages and accept a temporary ceasefire in the fighting with Israel in order to secure a more lasting one. Under the most recent proposal, Israel would release Palestinian prisoners at a 10 to 1 ratio to the number of Hamas hostages held. The deal will also stipulate the gradual return of Palestinians displaced from Gaza, according to the source. Mohammed Nassal, a member of the Hamas political bureau, said negotiations were ongoing but faltering, adding that Israel proposed a temporary ceasefire, which is something Hamas will not accept. Hopefully something good will come from these continued efforts. A ceasefire is a problematic decision for Israel as it allows Hamas to regroup and refresh for further attack. And tensions with the U.S. and Israel increase, with Israeli PM Netanyahu slamming U.S. President Joe Biden, calling accusations that he is harming Israel false. Yes, U.S. President Joe Biden's attempts to separate the Israeli leadership from its people are false, Prime Minister Netanyahu said on Sunday. He was responding to the U.S. administration's heightened criticism of the Israel war effort. These are not my private policies, he said. They're policies supported by the overwhelming majority of Israelis. On Saturday, Biden said Netanyahu was undermining the values on which Israel was founded and is harming the country with his handling of the Gaza war. Netanyahu has a right to defend Israel, a right to continue to pursue Hamas. But he must, he must, he must pay more attention to the innocent lives being lost as a consequence of the actions taken, Biden told MSNBC. He's hurting Israel more than helping Israel. It's contrary to what Israel stands for, and I think it's a big mistake. Netanyahu told Politico in the US, if Biden meant that I'm pursuing private policies against the wish of other Israelis, that this is hurting the interests of Israel, he's wrong on both accounts. Israel's support IDF action in Gaza to destroy Hamas, and they do not want to see a Palestinian authority in Gaza that finances terrorism, nor do they back a Palestinian state rammed down our throats. Yes, sad to see the ugliness in US politics now being projected into other parts of the world. But back to Israel, after a weekend barrage of rocket attacks from Hezbollah, Israel has hit terror sites in Lebanon. Yeah, IDF fighter jets on Monday night struck two Hezbollah terror organization sites in the area of the Bekaa Valley in Lebanon. The strikes were in retaliation to Hezbollah aircraft attacks launched towards the Golan Heights over recent days, the IDF spokesperson unit reported. Reports in Lebanon said that at least one civilian was killed, several others injured in the Israeli strikes. Two security sources and the Baalbek governor, Bashir Kadar, told media that one of the strikes hit the southern entrance to the city of Baalbek. 
on Sunday afternoon, Hezbollah fired at least 30 rockets towards northern Israel. This occurred hours after 35 launches from Lebanon were identified on Sunday morning, a number of which were intercepted. And in an ominous sign, Russia will hold joint naval drills with Iran and China. What an alarming piece of news this is. The Russian Defence Ministry on Monday announced that a group of Russian warships has arrived in Iranian waters for participation in a joint exercise with Iran and China called Maritime Security Belt 2024. The practical part of the exercise will take place in the waters of the Gulf of Oman of the Arabian Sea. The main purpose of the manoeuvres is to work out the safety of maritime economic activity, the Defence Ministry said. The goals of this exercise include strengthening the security of international maritime trade, combating piracy and maritime terrorism, facilitating information exchange for maritime rescue operations, and sharing operation on tactical insights, said Iranian state media. Yes, very ominous, Ron, very ominous. And saying nothing is impossible for the Lord, the mother of an Israeli hostage has expressed her gratitude for the prayers of Christians around the world. Well, how uplifting is this report? One of the most prominent spokespeople within the group of Israeli hostage families is Rachel Goldberg. Her only son and eldest child, Hirsch, is still being held captive in the Gaza Strip. And Monday marked 150 days since October 7. The eloquent, God-fearing mother has been very active on social media, reading a psalm every day for her son as, as he's been held in the hands of Hamas. I can't believe I got to Psalm 150 and my boy is not home, Goldberg wrote on the Bring Hirsch Home Facebook page. But Psalm 150 is joyous and we will be joyful again. We will continue to be hopeful because hope is mandatory. On day 133, the brave mother quoted the psalm, Hine Matov, how good and pleasant it is for brothers to dwell together in unity, something that has characterized her campaign as she's reached out for prayer and friendship through this unimaginably difficult trial. On day 143, Goldberg spoke to Christian journalist Paul Calvert of Bethlehem Voice Radio, urging Christians around the world, please do not stop praying. As one of the dual Israeli US citizens currently being held hostage by Palestinian terrorists in Gaza, Hirsch turned 23 just two days before attending the music festival near the Gaza border on October 6 last year. There's been very little information about the condition of the hostages since the Red Cross has not succeeded in visiting any one of them. So the family clings to any snippets they can get. Hard to imagine, Ron, the trauma that the families of these hostages must be going through. But Ron, I want to thank you for your insights and your report today. As always, very informative and very detailed. Thank you, Ron Ross, for that Israel, Middle East and Gaza war update today. Thank you, Andrew. Thanks for taking time to listen to this audio on demand from Vision Christian Media. To find out more about us, go to vision.org.au.